So uh, we will uh, begin this uh, uh, webinar. <coughs> it, it is the fifth uh, webinar of a series, uh, which name is a series of questions on uh, equity, and uh, the, the kick name is uh, Blue Justice. So um, we are uh, very happy to welcome uh, Alex Levin from uh, CNRS and uh, Florence Menes Flo uh, from uh, UBO. Uh, they will uh, talk about um, the dams uh, against the Atlantic, socio-technical arrangement and inequalities in dealing with sargassum. And uh, so I think that it's a uh, um, work in progress that uh, you are working on uh, presently in a research project. And so uh, we are very excited to hear about it and uh, thank you again for uh, your uh, presentation. I will leave you um, develop a little bit to present uh, yourself, both uh, Alex and Florence, and uh, then to, to share uh, with us your, um, your first result on uh, this research project. Thank you, Betty. I'm going to share my PowerPoint in the first place. So please tell me if everything's all right. Um, is it okay for you all? Yes, it's okay. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, and you see it changing. So thanks a lot, uh, Betty, and thanks a lot to you all for sharing uh, this moment with us. I'm Alex Levin. I work as an anthropologist uh, at the French National Center for Scientific Research. And I've been uh, working on uh, massive green algae strandings, known as green tides, uh, for 13 years now. My research interest is on the lived experience of uh, environmental damage in the context of changing sensibilities due to the spreading of uh, ecological concerns and uh, ecological discourses. And that is how and why I met uh, Florence and I started to work with her. Hello. I'd like to add my thanks to those of Alex and to you who are listening to us and um, who will hopefully be taking part in the final and future discussions. And uh, thanks to you, Betty and uh, Olivier. I am Florence Menez and I work as an anthropologist too. In um, uh, 1999, I began researching uh, the dynamics of uh, coastal relations in situations involving the proliferation of uh, species such as uh, algae and clams um, in uh, Italy, in uh, Brittany, and uh, in the uh, French West Indies. I coordinated the CERIMED project on the social impacts of uh, Sargassum. Uh, it's a project funded by the Fondation France and uh, linked to AMUR and to the Caribbean Social Science Laboratory at the University of French West Indies in uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe. And uh, this uh, project CERIMED gave rise to uh, gave rise to today's intervention. So what uh, we'd like to uh, present to you today is the result of a dialogue we initiated a few years ago, a dialogue on how questions of justice and the painful experience of a degraded home environment relate to each other. To do so, we build on shared re reflections on a specific situation because uh, we anthropologists tend uh, to stick to inductive or abdu abductive uh, epistemologies. That means we think through cases. And here is the situation we started to reflect on. In 2011, the larger Caribbean area has been affected by massive strandings of pelagic algae, sargassum species, and inhabitants of east-oriented coasts, the ones that face the Atlantic, have been progressively, heterogeneously, and with a bad chimney, been covered with protection devices aiming at preventing sargassum rifts uh, to ground. So hence uh, the, the title of this communication, Dance Against the Atlantic, a title that evokes a famous uh, novel you might know by French writer uh, Marguerite Duras, A Dam Facing the Pacific. This story is an uh, autobiographical tale that denunciates the deleterious uh, effects of colonial rule on social relations. It combines it with a description of a vain and endless battle of a poor family against coastal flooding. 
Our presentation will be divided into three parts. Firstly, we will explain our scientific position. That is the way in which, as anthropologists uh, working mainly with ethnographic materials, we approach the question of blue justice. From this point of view, we'll specify the research questions, uh, questions posed by the Caribbean field we are going to discuss today with you. The second part of our presentation will be devoted to understanding at several scales which forms of spatial differentiation can be read in the lesser anti arc by observing the protection systems against massive sargassum strandings. This will introduce what we have dubbed the catalog of dams. We will plunge with you into the contrasting materialities of anti-sargassum devices as deployed in Martinique. And in conclusion, we'd like to sketch out a few avenues for reflection and future research, uh, which we might, uh, we'd be delighted to discuss with, with you. So let us precise our scientific position towards blue justice. As has been mentioned by several speakers in this uh, webinar series, there are indeed very distinctive approaches to blue justice. This is a quite recent concept. And most of what uh, has been written and said about it to date adopts a normative perspective. By normative perspective, we mean a perspective that uh, has the aim of appraising or establishing the values and norms that best fit the overall needs and expectations of a given society. And indeed, blue justice is in the first place a claim for justice for sea-dependent people, uh, a claim which is informed by consistent evidence of enduring inequalities at sea, especially in fishing, and particularly striking grabbing mechanism as regards to sea resources. On the other extremity, a view that Conrad Ott, for instance, shared with us in a previous session, the idea that inequalities are per se unfair and the advocacy for justice at sea is not, uh, from a general theory of justice point of view, such as uh, John Rawls' uh, John Rawls's one, acknowledged by all as a heuristic proposal. So without pretending that our approach is value-free, we are concerned with its descriptive qualities. We are also concerned by its uh, ability to take into account the multiplicity of justice conceptions and problematizations that are enrolled in environmental issues, such as the ones we study. That's why we define it as descriptive. We also define it as materialist, not in a strictly uh, Marxian sense, but in the sense that it focuses both on material conditions of life and material cultures. Thus, we hypothesize that objects uh, have a social life, but also that social connections and power relations can be encapsulated into complex artifacts, such as dams. So since the beginning of years uh, 2010, uh, Sargassum connect both sides of the Atlantic. As you can see on this slide, they expand from Africa to Central America to form in their maximum uh, expanding phases, uh, what is now called the Great Sargassum Belt. Florence's research in the, first, uh, in the West, French West Indies, sorry, dates back to 2018, when she started to collect ethnographic data locally in the Sarimet program. Since then, several research initiatives and programs contribute to connect affected areas. Uh, we can cite um, at the regional level in the Caribbean, the sub-regional sargassum outlook Outlook Belt team, managed by the, by the University of West Indies in Barbados, but also with a trans transatlantic perspective, uh, SARTRAC or the INR Safe Sea, coordinated by our colleague Valérie Stiger here in Brest. Uh, the first adopts a monitoring perspective, the second a risk management and adaptation approach, and for the latter, uh, they adopt um, uh, an engineering uh, view for a uh, search for solutions. Our research generally pursues uh, uh, also a transatlantic, a transatlantic perspective to address lived experience of massive pelagic algae stranding on both parts of the ocean. In the first place, uh, our aim is to revisit our respective long-term ethnographic uh, research from an environmental justice perspective. And to do so, we seek to combine an effort to objectivize environmental inequalities 
through observation of their materialization, while accounting for the conceptions and perceptions of injustice by residents confronted with the effects of uh, algae stranding. It was true, um, uh, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, uh, there's a major tension here uh, on which we build some of our uh, major uh, hypotheses. The first uh, is well known, is that ecological catastrophe are likely to align and equalize conditions or to subsume class conflict as classically uh, assumed uh, back in uh, 1992. But in practice, uh, social sciences uh, and empir empirical work shows multiple evidence of uneven exposure to environmental damages, which reinforces social uh, inequalities. So these are already re old research questions, but we got new angles to work with the emergence of the concept of blue justice in 2018. The first question is, what does blue bring here, insofar as if uh, the phenomena we study involve maritime spaces or entities, and the but the population we work with are not equally or always directly dependent, dependent on marine resources. Among them are small-scale fishermen, but not only on these tourism-oriented coastlines. A recent uh, literature review, however, emphasizes the genealogy of this concept of blue justice and reminds us, quite rightly in our view, that it's uh, first and foremost a plea. This fact directs research in our discipline more towards the study of resistance to the monopolization of maritime resources and amenities than it constitutes an operator of objectivation. So it was through this series of uh, questions that we re-interrogated our survey materials. Do ecologically uh, critical situations affect social uh, hierarchies and how? Do they align or on the contrary accentuate differences in living conditions? To what conceptions of justice do uh, those confronted with them refer? Are these conceptions specifically related to the maritime nature of the phenomena in question? And finally, how far can they inform blue justice thinking? Following this line of thought, it becomes uh, relevant to address massive sargassum strandings on Caribbean coasts from a blue justice angle, or rather to hypothesize that their stranding makes inequalities that are naturalized and almost invisibilized by coastal amenities manifest. We thus propose here to explore the ways in which the physical devices used to manage grandings, which at present mainly consist of coastal dams, make these inequalities visible and sometimes exacerbate them. Um, people we meet on the field talk from somewhere uh, and activate justice claims and issues from somewhere. This somewhere is characterized by specific, with specific social and political infrastructures, which all bear the stamp of the colonial history of the Caribbean. April Baptiste and Stacey Ann Robinson, working on climate justice in the Caribbean, have made us, regards to this heavy weight of colonialism, a useful literature review. They showed that a situated environmental theory was necessary to capture the traits of justice claims, conceptions, and power distribution. They identified three entries or themes to read complex interactions on the field, coloniality, sovereignty, and resistance. Coloniality provides the frame for understanding the normalization of exploitation and how it continues to reproduce itself uh, even in modern and contemporary times. Sovereignty shows how the struggle for self-determination either encourages or inhibits environmental justice. And resistance sheds light on the active systems that attempt to push back against the power structures of exploitation in pursuit of environmental justice. Keeping uh, this uh, general framework in mind, four material di dimensions for exploring the links between strandings socio-technical devices and power distribution in the Caribbean can emerge. The first dimension is related to what anthropologists and critical geographers are used to call nature cultures. As Chessing uh, sums up, 
protections against the sea are historically supported by Western visions of heavy infrastructures, such as seawalls, revetments, and groans. Such documented attitudes and representations guide technical choices. Moreover, these heavy infrastructures, sometimes very old, are in many places naturalized as they stabilize, sanitize, and often extend very limited spaces. In the case of Sargassum, this raises a specific question. It's not the movements of the sea as such that need to be influenced here, but what the, the ocean brings with it. Strandings are a coastal hazard of a specific kind, affected by fundamental uncertainties. Organic matter, partially fluid, partially solid, a, is a transforming matter that aggregates with sediments, approaches to mangroves, interacts with bacteria and flows into the air, oxidates, fermentates and moves through water, soil and air. So local people and institutions face and show discrepancies and hesitations as regards to the very characterization of the nature of the event they face. This leads us to the second element, the uncertain na nature and status of both concerned spaces and concerned entities. In France, the status of uh, coastal spaces is mainly public, but the shores of the Caribbean islands are governed by a specific legal regime. Without uh, detailing it, we can rapidly say that the islands are faced with a double and contradictory privatization dynamic. The first is an authorized, precarious, but often former occupation of the coastline. And the second is the development of, to say it rapidly, beach resorts. As a matter of fact, coastal areas are littered with pontoons, slipways, and other facilities of all, of all kinds. Who can do what? Who must do what? Who is res responsible for what? People very much expect an intervention, an, inter an intervention by the state and an egalitarian treatment. But in a post-colonial context, the state intervention is negotiated with local authorities that claim for their autonomy of decision and with local interest groups. And that brings us to the third element, the specialization of the economy, the concentration of economic resources in the hands of colonist descendants, the Beke in Martinique, and the resulting segmentation of space. Caribbean islands economies are highly dependent on tourism and coastal development, which make them very sensitive to stranding episodes. Business operators and residents face rapid uh, depreciations of their assets, a phenomenon that has in other contexts, such as the Adriatic Sea, participated in the collapse of several touristic uh, resorts. This pushes the demand for heavy and emergency engineering and puts pressure on public authorities for site-specific action. Local entrepreneurs anticipate tourists fleeing to other destinations, even when such an exodus hasn't been noticed yet, such as what happened in several coastal resorts in Brittany when green tides appeared. As you can see on this press article, and as anthropologist Laura Makadamoto and her colleagues recently showed, on the coasts of Mexico, which were severely severely uh, affected by sargassum strandings, this tourism focus has led to the abandonment of coastal villages in favor of areas developed for tourism. Pressures on resources are unevenly distributed, which is not breaking news. It seems to us that what is more specific here is that sargassum strandings are recognized by the IPCC to generate a lot of a loss of habitability for coastal and insular spaces. This because of their cumulative material and health impacts. Their impacts go far beyond their place of stranding and accumulation, especially because of atmos atmospheric diffusion of gases resulting from their decomposition, in particular ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Fourth and final dimension, the materialities of dwelling. Most coastal residents are unable to leave their homes even in the most affected uh, areas to the point that they alternatively tend to prove the damage done and to minimize it. This is one of the major results of the Sarimed research. 
These results are very consistent with previous results from Michelle Murphy on resistance to pollution assessment by indigenous communities. The result of such complex dynamics can be summarized as follows. Actions and discourse are predominantly oriented towards engineering solutions, depoliticized solution, solutions staging the promise, the promise sorry, of clean sargassum on land. Why at sea? They're cobbling together the maintenance of, of a distance and protection under very uneven conditions. Sarimed has dealt with this uneven uh, effect of sargassum stranding on everyday living conditions, attempting to document them, which is quite difficult. Over the years, our ongoing relations with local residents have shown how the dams were followed, commented on, discussed among them, and have also prompted incidental and often bitter disillusioned observations about the consideration given to the population of the coastal neighborhoods on the one hand, and to the beke on the other end. In such a situation, protection devices materialize both possible futures and uneven power distribution. They focus inhabitants' scrutiny, hopes, and claims. So let's follow, follow them and focus on these devices, dams, plastic seawalls, anchored or floating nets, because uh, their naming and their classification is quite unstable. Let's focus on their localization, management, conditions of fabrication and maintenance. Thank you, Alex. Um, in this second part, we'll try to introduce you uh, very quickly in uh, living conditions on the coast at different scales, from the regional overview in the Lesser Anti to a local description of the living conditions on the Atlantic coast in Martinique in the face of the, uh, this uh, Sargassum crisis. And um, so um, we'll start with a general overview of the region. Uh, the Lesser Anti are the um, archipelago to the southeast of the Caribbean Sea composed of eight independent states and as many dependencies of other states on more than 20 islands situated on the maritime border with the Atlantic and therefore at the forefront of the arrival of Sargassum as this map shows with uh, this biomass flow. Uh, but if we can observe an equivalent distribution of the phenomenon, we can note the very variable uh, variability, reception, and diversity of experiences uh, created by Sargassum in this uh, different island. So um, uh, first thing we can note that uh, the institutions are not yet uh, stabilized uh, in face uh, of this uh, Sargassum uh, strandings. On a regional scale, uh, the concerns expressed by the CARSPO of the Cartagena Convention on the Caribbean Sea Commission of the Association of Caribbean States in the mid um, uh, thousands uh, highlighted the relative uh, powerlessness of uh, states to develop adaptation strategies to mitigate the impacts of strandings. Um, in the same period, however, uh, management guides uh, were published in, uh, in uh, 2015 uh, by uh, the University of um, the West Indies, uh, the CERMES in particular. Uh, since uh, 2018, um, Sargassum is more present on the political agenda. The international conference organized in Guadeloupe in 2019, mentioned the desire at interregional level to exchange and cooperate on the impacts and strategies for combating sargassum. Um, that um, uh, with um, so management with uh, dams, uh, the French government has issued a series of emergency plans uh, starting in 2000. Um, 14, but uh, even on national territories uh, of the French West Indies, there are significant differences. On the island of Saint Barthélemy, for example, a destination for elite tourism and with a high average income, uh, hundreds of thousands of euros a year have been invested by the local authorities to ensure the collection of sargassum. 
uh, a dam was considered but uh, proved uh, complicated by the geographical configuration of the bay uh, where the saga soon arrived. From a Martinique-based perspective, we know that our, uh, our respondents uh, adopt a comparative approach uh, highlighting the experiences of uh, neighboring islands uh, through a non-protonial prism. Uh, this singular abundance uh, gives rise, in fact, to uh, charismatic uh, figures um, in uh, Santa Lucia and in uh, Saint Barthélemy. And so this shows uh, the very uh, small uh, scale dimension on the importance of uh, uh, local mobilization in the search for solutions. Uh, to prevent the disaster from uh, happening or to turn it into an opportunity. We are now going to zoom, uh, to zoom in on the, uh, this third uh, largest island in the Lesser Antilles, uh, so the, the Martinique, uh, that have um, uh, 416 kilometers of coastline, um, where we carried out our field research, mainly in the municipality of uh, Le Robert, Le Vauclin, and Le François, uh, where we conducted over 100 qualitative interviews uh, between uh, 2018 and um, uh, 2022. Uh, several people told us about dams as uh, one of the preventive solutions, and the location of the dams was known. Um, but uh, it was seen above as all as a palliative solution. Um, much more than uh, a dam, uh, what was um, discussed, uh, it was a collection uh, at sea, the collection of sargassum at sea, and uh, the valoris valorization, um, therefore transforming the sargassum into a resource. Um, it must uh, also be said that the sargassum problem is uh, embedded in a continuum of other problems of uh, natural origin, as uh, cyclones, or anthropogenic, anthropogenic uh, origin, as uh, kibon, uh, as chlordicone, uh, that feed a constant uh, environmental uh, vulnerability. Uh, this vulnerability uh, felt on the coast is all um, uh, the greater as strong coastal anthropogenic amplifies uh, the consequences of uh, events. Uh, in this comparison, um, you can see it in this comparison between uh, these two maps of the urbanization of uh, Pointe Hyacinthe in the commune of Le Robert, uh, where I, I did a survey. So the residents uh, surveyed experienced geographical disparities, and uh, there are clear uh, economic disparities too. Um, I don't have time to explain you uh, everything. But, uh, so the, pop the population affected, according to doctors, could be uh, as high as uh, around um, uh, 2,000. Two, um, uh, 20,000. Sorry? 20,000. 20,000, uh, thank you, <laughs> in uh, 11 Atlantic uh, coastal towns. Um, the decomposition of uh, sargassum causes uh, the um, uh, insidious and random emanation of uh, about uh, 30 gases. Uh, the main ones, uh, hydrogen, sulfide, and ammonia, are measure, measured by uh, 16 sensors. And uh, these measurements are published on the Madina website and uh, in the local media um, day by day. So it should be noted uh, that preventive solutions uh, such as these sensors and uh, such as dam installations are the subject of controversies. Um, um, first of all, because uh, they are considered um, sensors as uh, dams uh, to be uh, knowingly distributed uh, across the coast. And so these gases manifest themselves uh, through their deleterious effects on electronics, which they leave out of order, on walls by uh, speckling paint, on aluminum or silverware by blackening them, on social life and uh, on health, uh, provoking depression, skin allergies, asthma attacks, uh, headaches, uh, memory loss. So living on the coast uh, becomes a constant challenge uh, that forces residents to invent new strategies uh, adapting to uh, its uh, constraint. 
And um, so, um, um, so the population have to uh, invent a new uh, way of life. And um, it's the next one, please. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, uh, yes, the question um, where um, uh, is that the sensors on dams um, are the new normality? Uh, so uh, the first uh, feeling on um, uh, of um, injustice uh, is that uh, these arrivals of uh, Sangasum, um, uh, they are arrivals of Sangasum without um, uh, being um, without responsibility of um, the people that uh, uh, see arrived uh, Sangasum, and um, it's. Um, it's a feeling of uh, justice uh, against a system of um, a colonial system, which reveals itself at that moment with um, distant places of decision and uh, not aware of the problems. Uh, therefore, political agenda uh, slower to activate. And the feeling of um, invisibility of the phenomenon uh, leads to think uh, of a form of resistance uh, by proposing local barrier solutions. So in the in face of this uh, the deterioration of uh, these places, but also the attachment that binds people to these places and um, uh, the sensitive experience lived on a daily basis um, uh, leads, um, 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 uh, sorry, um, 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 give a rise to a resistance uh, against Sangasum, but also to resist against a very long time frame uh, of putting it on uh, the agenda. And um, uh, this uh, resistance, resistance activates uh, uh, the capital by mobilizing uh, the know-how, um, the, the way to uh, do it yourself and the expertise and uh, it can be uh, categorized in um, uh, three um, three elements. So um, knowledge and skills productions um, um, that are uh, both contextualized uh, and uh, decontextualized um, to imagine and to design, uh, to invent, in fact, uh, um, a new uh, future with a dam. Um, to finance and to get uh, financed. Uh, so you need uh, interpersonal skills and contributions uh, managed by um, association, uh, often uh, associations that uh, are created uh, ad hoc. And uh, you have to mobilize the public authorities. Uh, so it um, becomes a techno-political dam uh, and the um, coastal zone um, became a um, coastal uh, friction zone and um, and you have to uh, the question was uh, is that uh, do you have a, re a reconfig a territorial reconfiguration and um, a new solidarity that were uh, put uh, to the test uh, in this uh, dam solution and um uh, the question, uh, so I can quote uh, Murphy, and uh, uh, Alex uh, uh, talked about Murphy. So, um, are these uh, altered living conditions uh, divides us as much as binds us? So I'm going to talk about uh, the dam catalog. And this final section, we're now going to, to show you some uh, of the contrasting materialities of the anti sargassum devices we've seen deployed in Martinique. We wondered uh, if it would be possible to produce a catalog of dams, <laughs> uh, a flat typology uh, of four catalog, uh, four color catalog, uh, mm, or to present uh, the technical solutions of the SARG fair, so the SARG expo, uh, which accompany the Guadeloupe International Conference in uh, 2019. Um, so we need to introduce, um, uh, we think it's not possible <laughs> to produce this type uh, of uh, dam catalog. So we need to introduce a temporal and dynamic dimension 
into the characterization, um, embedded uh, order mechanism in Sargasso management uh, social technical devices, and ask uh, ourselves uh, if we can use DAMS to establish a metric of inequality. So let's start with this um, overview of technical systems for the collection and prevention of Sargassum strandings. Public organizations have published plans uh, which bring together prevention techniques and in particular dams uh, with the price and uh, as you can see and technical characteristics um, which um, you can see it with this uh, extract from a Sargassum control manual published by the French environmental Environment and Energy Management Agency. So um, uh, in Guadeloupe and Martinique, the DEAL or the ADEM uh, have also produced uh, for the new brigades uh, dedicated to uh, um, in situ operations uh, guides. Uh, where you can see slides uh, by bay, by beach, and uh, on all configurations of impacted locations, which present the techniques most suited uh, to these uh, locations. And this uh, technical sheet, the responses to sargassum arrivals uh, is uh, divided between preventive measures and curative measures. Um, we uh, read on several files that uh, the solution for uh, installing a deflector barrier uh, are not studied. Uh, given the exposure of this site, the solution seems unsuitable. And um, so we are going to see uh, on this on the catalog summary what solutions are uh, suitable uh, for what uh, type uh, what type what typology of uh, sites. So the summary of the catalog is divided into five chapters, which can be characterized according to the diversity of the technical options, the different gene genealogies, the inclusion in networks of players, and the issues they reveal beyond their materiality. The diversity of technical options, the prevalence of do-it-yourself solutions, and the importance of the resources, understood in a more complex way than income, uh, available to local residents are all reflected in this great heterogeneity. So we're going to see for the municipal dams. It's uh, the dams that um, uh, is um, the more similar at what I showed you uh, with the guide, management guide. So um, in these pictures, uh, we can read, welcome at Le Robert in the cradle of the round skiff. And this can, uh, you can read it on this K on a painting representing the usual color of the water. The usual thing uh, the color was also um, the usual um, way to use this K uh, was um, before uh, 2011. Um, because this case was the start on uh, the finish of traditional sailboat races. And the background on this uh, picture, you can see uh, two typology of dams, uh, which correspond to two different genealogies. In order to protect the bottom of the bay and to divert the sargassum onto the keys for their collection, two successive dams were installed by a dedicated new service at the town hall uh, town hall of uh, Le Robert. Uh, so the first generation dam, um, with this first generation la, uh, dam, uh, we can uh, learn uh, the effect, um, the, the, uh, the, the, sorry, the heavy investment by the municipality. And um, between these two dams, uh, there is a passage uh, that allows uh, fishermen to uh, circulate. And the uh, two dams are uh, made with different mesh uh, size and sizes and attachments and need to be maintained to avoid uh, malfunctions. Um, These uh, two dams, um, so um, 
uh, the, the dam uh, is being uh, built uh, in an existing um, uh, environmental configuration and has to make um, with um, the seabed, the coral, but also the attention paid to uh, flora and uh, to fauna, to nautical activities and to repair uh, capacities, etc. So um, upstream of the installation of each dam, a form of control is uh, exercised uh, over each of these systems um, because um, you have to, to have the authorization of uh, the DAL and uh, the DAL have uh, some uh, criteria uh, for uh, environment um, yes, uh, to pose uh, the uh, dam. In um, the same municipality, uh, but in the in a neighborhood uh, further north and uh, more residential, um, you can see an accumulation of uh, sargassum uh, that can be seen uh, from this uh, residence uh, terrace. Uh, this dam, which seems to uh, fulfill its uh, mechanical function very well uh, is just as um, um, is uh, just as um, um, uh, talkative uh, when it comes to its installation. This dam concentrates, in fact, the expression of a feeling of injustice on the part of a few uh, neighbors and uh, the political choices that govern the installation of dams in such bay. Um, um, because uh, the impression, the feeling, is that equality between citizens uh, will, uh, will not be uh, respected um, uh, by the, ter the choice of uh, putting a dam uh, in this place. Uh, an interlocutor spoke of this uh, communal dam as uh, the one of the rich, uh, just uh, as the inhabitants of uh, Le François, uh, um, a municipality further south, uh, will speak of the decay that we are going to see it uh, after. Um, the uh, second category uh, of dams is the associative dam. So in some um, highly affected base uh, groups, uh, sometimes uh, formal associations, uh, sharing everyday solutions, uh, building a community of experience, have been set up to carry out expert assessments and contribute to the installation of dams. As here at uh, Frégate Est 2 in the municipality of Le François. So in, um, in uh, 2018, residents of this small neighborhood joined together to finance a first experimental dam. Uh, there is, in fact, a new market that has been created and which brings local operators and operators from uh, mainland France into competition. Uh, the field survey also underlines the difficulties inherent in this type of enterprise, uh, which are technical, financial, and interpersonal, particularly in terms of building collectives linked by the area and the time of the Sargassum crisis, during the time of the Sargassum crisis, sorry. In this case, uh, the dam could become a material link through a part of the inhabitant. But having a dam uh, requires, requires not only forming a collective, a form of uh, solidarity at the level of the impacted neighborhood, but also expertise in the administration and the procedures to follow. However, the um, criteria to obtain authorization are also seen as a form of injustice because they are complex. Uh, moreover, the life of the dams is, such, is also their fragility in the face of this sargassum material, both fluid and solid, uh, which exerts pressure on the nets, uh, which must therefore be repaired regular, regularly. Uh, so in this case, uh, the algae have entered the march, the next one, please, and are rotting on the spot because they are trapped by the net. And the other pictures, the following, in the following picture, you can see a group of inhabitants working to put on an additional rig rep 
used to stabilize a dam. A request for a new, more efficient dam has been obtained and can be installed uh, next year. Um, the last example, yes, last example of associative dam, it's uh, so at uh, between Le François and uh, Le Vauclin, it's another collective dam becomes not a new link, but a reinforcement of a historical link. So as anthropologists, as you have seen, we use our own um, pictures as well as documentation uh, freely available on the internet and satellite uh, pictures can provide a demonstrative perspective uh, that is harder to obtain from a ter terrestrial point of view. So this satellite picture uh, gives us a much better idea of the operating e equipment consisting of uh, four superimposed dams designed to provide optimum protection for the district known as the Beke land and land used in, used in English. So the, the dam is made up mainly of plastic mesh constituting panels linked together by posts, which are planted at uh, regular intervals on the bottom. Um, it's a priori banal and roughly similar to the other dams. However, the social life of the dam is unique since it is intimately associated with the neighborhood and uh, its finance finances, uh, even in um, even in its name, it's the Beke Dam. And um, um, there are uh, two main reasons for uh, the controversy of this Beke Dam, uh, particularly uh, among residents of the neighboring uh, districts. Firstly, the speed uh, with which the association will have obtained the, this uh, authorization for temporary occupation of the public maritime domain. And two, the suspicion that the diverted Sargassum is reaching neighboring districts. Uh, and the dam consolidates the defiance against this uh, social economic group. Um, the local uh, ecological dams, um, if you, we, we move further south along the Atlantic coast, we can see another type of dam. So this picture it, uh, taken at Point Fola shows us the dam in the background. Uh, the presence of this dam allows this uh, mother helped by her son to continue using the sea for its uh, therapeutic virtu virtues. In fact, this basin is very popular with local and tourists alike. And it's um, a 400 uh, meter long dam is made up uh, of bamboo elements and rigid nets uh, fixed in the sandy bottom by a fixed post. It was installed in uh, 2021 uh, after the uh, authorization from the Prefecture de la Martinique for an experimental time of six months. And it is uh, maintained by local fishermen and it's still there. Um, an alternative dam alongside collective experiences, they are also solitary ones. Uh, for this uh, penultimate point, we want to talk about what could we, what could be called an alternative dam or an operational equipment of the waiting. This picture uh, was taken in the commune of Le Robert. Um, will serve to illustrate this proposition in front of. Um, uh, the small house of uh, uh, this um, uh, woman. Um, this um, uh, she is, uh, in fact, uh, you, you can see the um, disaster um, in front of um, her little house, and she uh, has uh, health problems aggravated by ammonia um, uh, gases uh, and due uh, jointly to the to Sargasso and to the proximity of the mangrove. And if we focus, we can see this net um, uh, in the dried sargasso, and it's a derisory uh, net uh, given the quantity of sargasso, but which uh, clearly uh, crystallizes uh, the desperate actions taken while waiting for major solutions. Uh, the net here materializes uh, the issues of the temporalities of public action and individual action. And we arrived to um, waiting for the dam. So we started by uh, setting the work of Marguerite Duras. We end with that of uh, Samuel Beckett, as in Beckett's play, Waiting for Godot. 
where the characters discuss death on the human condition while waiting for the main character, some dams uh, make people talk even when they are not there. In fact, since uh, 219, a sign has been advertising the installation of this dam to protect a small bay bordered by few uh, few houses. Uh, but uh, what's also being discussed in this um, the ultimate dam, uh, the one that doesn't yet exist, it's the embankment. Um, if it pushes the sea further away from houses, in fact, in some places, it would uh, enable Sargassum to slip through instead of rushing into a certain base. So um, I let, um, I let uh, Alex conclude. Thank you. Well, we took uh, uh, very much of your time for the presentation. So if uh, you agree, we'll start the discussion. Uh, so we have uh, uh, enough time to do so in good conditions. Thank you very much uh, uh, to both of you. I'm sure that uh, within the, the discussion, we will be able to, to come back to your uh, conclusion and, uh, uh, and to... Um, uh, to question uh, you about uh, as um, the, the way you you have uh, uh, understood uh, all these different uh, um, ways to uh, develop dams and uh, to to try to um, manage uh, this uh, uh, phenomena. So uh, I will not take uh, more time, and uh, I uh, will uh, give the. The, um, the word to the participants. So, um, do you have some questions? You can uh, ask. Uh...